today I'm going to show you how to maintain the AR-15 rifle in variants of which it's a lot of different um, models out there a lot of different people are making AR-15s right now this particular one is a Bushmaster but the cleaning procedures I'm going to use should generally keep you right where you need to be with just about any of them I'm going to assume that you already know how to take these things apart to a degree Alright, we're going to drop two axis pins, separate the upper and the lower, depress, depress this small plunger back here in front of the buffer tube assembly. If you have to, use a flat nose of a punch. Pull that whole assembly out. If you want, you can... Um, you can pull the stock off and clean up under there if you feel like it. Go ahead and do that. In terms of the upper, go ahead and pull the charging handle back. The bolt assembly drops out like so. With the ARs, the main thing that you're going to get stoppages and failures with in terms of maintenance is going to come from the bolt. So that's the main thing we're going to concentrate on when you're cleaning these things. The rest of it's pretty much secondary. Um, you really just mop out the um, receiver, take and clean the chamber really well, and we're going to scrub the bore. But other than that, we're going to concentrate mainly on the bolt. Let me get it apart. The AR-15 is an excellent design, but if not kept clean, it is prone to stoppages that are mainly related to the way the gas system operates. Gas flows through the gas tube from the gas port of the rifle and is driven into this gas key on the bolt carrier. So basically it can gum up the inside of the bolt. All right, pull the cotter pin out, firing pin drops out, take this camming key right here, turn it lengthways with the bolt carrier, drop it out like that. The bolt itself comes out. You can use either a punch or the firing pin. Preferably use a punch. Push out the small pin. The extractor comes out. So basically what you're going to do is you want to make sure all these, area, these items are clean, obviously. You can accomplish that by scrubbing them down with a little bit of solvent and a toothbrush. Um, I'll demonstrate that for you. It's really not a whole lot to it. Now here at the shop we use an ultrasonic cleaner to accomplish these tasks, but I'm just showing you by hand just to give you an idea. I mean the carrier is not really that big of a deal. It's really all the guts you want to make sure are clean with these ARs. Now one thing you want to check when you're cleaning the carrier itself, make sure this gas key is tight because under recoil they can work loose. and if that gas key shears loose during firing, you're going to have a really bad day. To include possibly blowing up your damn upper, okay? It's happened, all right? It will happen. Make sure that key is tight. You'll notice that the screws themselves are actually staked in place. That's fine. This one's nice and tight. There's nothing wrong with it. For the purposes of the way that I'm going to clean these guns today, I'm going to use an ultrasonic bath. Let me change the camera angle and show you uh, how that process works. But you can see a little bit of solvent and a toothbrush will help you get into some of the tight areas here that are difficult to get in. You definitely want to make sure this area right here is clean and the gas rings are clean. And you want to make sure it's clean under the extractor. That's generally about the only area that they fail. What happens is... This area right here where the gas punches through gets really, really caked up. And it can just cause the gun to just not operate. I mean, plain and simple. Okay, with this AR, while we move on to the lower, I'm going to give these parts an ultrasonic bath. In retrospect, yes, this is cheating, but this is how most gunsmiths do it. Carrier, firing pin, firing pin retaining pin, extractor, bolt and three gas rings and a camming a cam pin and the retaining pin for the extractor and drop it in the ultrasonic 
We're going to let the ultrasonic do all the hard work. We're going to let that run. We'll come back to it later. Let's check out the lower. What an ultrasonic actually does, you use a heated solution. Usually what I use is a good bit of water and I cut it with simple green. And what this does is it imparts very small and deliberate vibrations throughout the solution and it attacks all of the solvents, uh, any oils that are on the material, solvents, carbon buildup, um, brass shavings, anything that's on it. It'll break it up and draw it to the surface and the part will remain completely free, uh, clean and oil free. This is a great investment if you do a lot of gun cleaning. Even at the personal level, if you just shoot a lot of machine guns, you, you're a private owner of machine guns, one of these is a great way to keep yourself clean without, with a minimal amount of effort. You can use a little elbow grease, a toothbrush, and accomplish a task, but this is always nice to have. Okay, before we start work on the lower, what I like to do, I like to go ahead and put a, a good coat of solvent in the bore, copper solvent, so it can sit up while we're um, working on the lower. I like to let it sit up for a few minutes. The cleaning rod I'm using is actually just a GI cleaning rod, which is not a big deal. If you have a bore guide, go ahead and use it, but it's not really necessary. This is a loose fitting um, brush, and all I'm doing is just coating the bore with a good um, coat of solvent. So I'm going to let that solvent sit. We're going to run dry patches and then a coat of oil, and then that's good. For the lower, all you really want to do is pull the pins out, just have a good look at everything. There's not really a whole heck of a lot you can do to mess with the lower without, I guess, taking it apart, per se. Um, one of my favorite methods, and one of the methods we use in Iraq quite often to keep our lowers clean, take some compressed air. Be surprised what a little bit of compressed air can do for cleaning the lower. And then what I do is I take a small punch like this one and got some of it somewhere. Take just a little bit of this rig grease, which is really cheap. Dip the punch in this rig grease and just give a few careful applications of this rig grease to a few of the surface bearing areas. I mean basically in here just look for wear patterns and apply the grease in those areas. It'll just help with the moving parts to keep the, the overall wear down on the individual parts. there. I'm going to show you a close-up uh, to show you the areas I lubricated. Basically any area where you see rubbing on the metal parts, the finish rubbed off, you want to go ahead and apply a little bit of grease to those areas. I put some right there on that surface. So really not a whole lot to it. Just blow it out. I mean cleaning these things is really easy. In terms of the lower, that's really about all we're going to do. There's really not a whole lot to this process. It's really, really easy. But it's one of those things that I get a lot of questions about. And it, sometimes it's almost to the point where people bug the crap out of me about it. So that's why I want to make a video. People want to see how I clean ARs, and this is how I do it. Of course, any of your parts, just take some compressed air. Your actual spring and plunger, recoil spring and plunger. Uh, if you want to, you can just grab a cloth. And what I'll do, you can even throw that in the ultrasonic like you did the other parts. Just take it and 
kind of wipe it off. It's really not all that big of a deal. Like I said, the, the real the real Achilles heel on these ARs is the bolt assembly. As long as that's kept uh, very clean, the rest of it, while yes, it is important to keep it clean, it is somewhat secondary on that end. All right. All right, we'll coat a blistol on this. This is good. So the lower is pretty much as clean as it needs to be for our purposes. You could probably take and just wipe these axis pins down a little bit. Uh, they will get dirt and grit in them. You don't want that uh, giving you any issues. It makes it easier to take apart too when it's cleaner, of course. We'll go ahead and install our buffer and spring back in there. We're gonna put our stock back on. place our stock. The lower is good. You got it clean, greased up, blown out. That's really all you want to mess with. Your actual uh, charging handle, real easy. Just wipe it down. Get all the dirt, carbon, anything that might be on it, anything that might inhibit movement. You know, check, check for serviceability, make sure everything's got its proper amount of tension. The uh, carrier handle latch has got a good amount of tension. That's good. We're done with that. I've been letting the solvent sit up in the bore on this thing. If you want, you can pop the hand guards and check for rust underneath. It's not really that big of a deal. It just depends on how detailed you want to get with it. They make a product for cleaning these ARs that's actually like a little, looks like a little star-shaped chamber key, and it's a chamber brush. What I'm doing here, I'm just swabbing out the inside of the actual receiver. You could, um, you could clean this whole assembly in the ultrasonic also. I'm just doing some of it by hand just to show you. I mean, there's really not a lot to it. It's not that, that big of a deal. When it comes to cleaning the chamber in general, you can use an M16 style cleaning brush that has steel wires around it. What I like to do is I, t I use pipe cleaners and I get in there and I swab the recesses, all, basically the star in there. I go ahead and swab those out with, um, like I said, pipe cleaners. That's a really handy way to do it. Also, use of compressed air is always a nice thing. And I'm just showing you some general cleaning procedures. This is not set in stone. Everybody has a different way of doing it in terms of how limited you are with your materials. much better. Got a brush, I'm just gonna scrub the chamber a little bit, back and forth motion. I mean nothing nothing real big of a deal here. Just want to make sure the chamber is clean and smooth. Now you will run into a different a few different uh, types of overall um, bore and chamber types. You pretty much got uh, chrome lined and non-chrome lined. Non-chrome lined is going to be a little bit more difficult to clean, but generally regarded to be more robust and more accurate in general, uh, just because you do have the ability to pretty much shoot any kind of ammo you want in it. Chrome lined chambers will be easier to clean, um, but will be a little bit more picky with the type of ammo they will take, and generally across the board they will be, some people consider them to be less accurate. As far as I know, most military guns will be chrome lined because, you know, of course, they want um, ease of maintenance in the field and everything like that. Um, there's nothing wrong with chrome lined. There's nothing wrong with just a standard uh, chamber and bore. It's just one thing to consider. That's all when you're buying one. I'm going to go on to. Uh, I'm going to clean the solvent out of the bore, and I'm going to put a light coat of oil, and we're going to check on everything that's in the ultrasonic. And this thing will pretty much be ready to assemble. There's not much to it. These are real easy guns to take care of. And, you know, the AR-15 in general gets a bad rap from people just because 
of the inherit uh, and reliability issues of some of them. But I tell you what, if properly maintained, these guns function flawlessly. And most of your uh, issues with these guns can pretty much stem straight back to either magazines or improper maintenance. Let's move on. Okay, when you swap your bore out, you're probably going to get a little bit of a bluish green or green, blue, any combination of colors on the patch. And what that is is actually dissolved solvent, copper from the solvent. Um, basically what you'll do is you'll repeat the process of cleaning the bore with solvent until the patches come out generally um, clean for the most part. Run dry patches through it, dry the bore out, and then put a light coat of Blistol on the bore. Just make sure before you shoot, you dry the bore out or you're going to get real accuracy issues and you get a lot of fouling in the bore. Okay? Let's check on our bolt. And this thing will be ready to put back together and ready to shoot. Alright, we just fished the uh, parts out of the ultrasonic. Everything looks good. Uh, that cleaner really does a good job of getting every little bit of oil, residue, I mean you name it, it gets it all off of there. This whole area here was caked in carbon before. And that's all that came off just then when I wiped it. The rest of it is completely carbon free. I'm going to take my air nozzle, compressed air, I'm going to blow off all the parts. Keep all your small parts set aside, don't lose them. One of the most underrated solvents in the world is water. It works wonders. On this bolt, one of the things you want to look at is the position of the actual gas rings. You'll notice that they have these slots in them. All right, The slots have to be staggered so you don't get escaping gas, which can hinder the proper function of the weapon. So just take your fingernail. All right, that one's, that one's brought around. I'm going to bring this one around. Don't worry about trying to move the one in the middle. Just bring the ones on the ends on around. I'm going to show you a close-up of what I just did. All right. You can see there's one of the slots on the actual bolt. There's two. There's three. And hopefully you can see they're well staggered so you don't lose gas pressure. So from this point on, I'm basically just going to take a little Blistol, lubricate the bolt itself, doesn't take much, just a little bit. Of course, wipe off any excess. Blistol is an excellent oil. It emulsifies well with water. It'll actually cut with water, and it won't lose any of its uh, properties it needs as an oil. Replace our extractor. Wipe everything down with a light coat of oil. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just enough to protect the metal from uh, any kind of rust that may result from it sitting up in your safe or closet or wherever you keep it. All right, got a nice light coat of oil on the bolt. Replace the bolt. Now on these bolts, one thing you'll notice is basically just use common sense. The extractor needs to be on the right. But there's tick marks on the bolt to remind you in case you need to know. So replace the bolt with the extractor facing to the right. Line up the hole, replace your cam pin in the same manner that you took it out. Rotate it 45 degrees. Push it out like that. Drop the firing pin back in. Drop the firing pin. Uh, retaining pin, cam pin in there. It's not a cam pin, it's actually just a little pin. Alright, what I like to do is push the bolt in. See how that moves nice? That's what you want. I'm going to take a light coat of oil, 
again, you put it on the boat, the, the bolt where you've been handling it, wipe it down. And this is really the only weak point of the gun is the bolt design. Everything else is solid. Uh, now, they do make a piston-driven upper for ARs that basically gives the AR-15 pretty much Kalashnikov-like reliability. Uh, they are somewhat reasonably priced. When they first came out, they were a little more expensive. But they have since come down in price a considerable amount. Go ahead and take and replace your charging handle in there. Drop your charging handle in. Take your bolt. Drop it in. Everything's home. Grab the lower and the upper and put them right back together. Make sure these pins are out. These pins won't come out on their own. They're self-retained. Your axis pins. Place it. Really not a whole lot to it. pretty much it. This AR is ready to take out the range and blaze away. Not a whole lot to taking care of an AR. That's really about all you need to know.